Yep, it's Tokyo tree time, and this time we are going to be designing and sewing ornaments based off of each of these snacks. Now, I'm not sure if I want to do the actual snack itself, or if I want to do the packaging, or maybe turn the mascot into an ornament. We're just gonna wing it and see what happens. If you don't know what Tokyo Treat is, it's a monthly subscription box for delicious Japanese snacks. Follow the link in the description if you want to get your own and support this channel out. It's delicious and I'm dying to get creative, so let's get into the box and get to sewing. All right, here we go. Our first ornament is going to be based off of this Christmas pizza pateco because nothing says Christmas like pizza. Ah yes, a nice potato snack with the essence of pizza flavor. So because there was a wreath on the front of this package and it was pizza flavored, there was only one thing to do. Combine the two things! So we are going to be making a pizza wreath ornament, which what other sort of ornament do you really need around the holidays, right? So this was pretty easy. It was basically making a pizza ornament but with a hole in it so that it looked like a wreath. And of course I did want to add as many little leafy bits as I could to make it look more like a wreath than just a pizza. Though honestly, after I had put all of these different ingredients and toppings on it, I kind of wish I did just leave it at sauce, cheese, and pepperoni because the simple simplicity of that just looks really cute and adorable. And once I put the leaves on it and the mushrooms and the olives, I think it just kind of became too busy and just too complicated. I think making it more simple would have been cuter, but hey, it's a customizable pizza wreath. You can do whatever you want. Heck, I should make a big one to put on my door. Ooh. Next up we have vegetable potato sticks share pack. Gotta love those long boys. Oh wow, they've definitely got a vegetable taste and I'm definitely going to be eating all of these. So I'm a big fan of these Kalbi potato stick snacks. They come in a lot of really good flavors. I snacked on them a lot while I was in Japan. I love their little mascot, the little potato chip guy is really cute and they also have this giraffe guy which is cute. So I couldn't resist just recreating this snack and the packaging. I just, I couldn't resist doing it and it was a lot of fun just putting as many little sewn details into this as I could. Especially when it comes to these ornaments, the more little details you put into these things, the just, the more intricate and adorable and I don't know just very appealing they become so I wanted to recreate the chip bag obviously and then I also wanted to recreate the snacks pouring out of the snack bag because I just thought it would be cute to have them pouring out as it hung on the tree so I cut out a bunch of rectangles used Posca pins to paint on those vegetable colored bits and there you go I've got a hanging pouring snack ornament the only problem is now whenever I see it I'll want some potato snacks Our next snack is salty green pea mini chips. These are the smallest and most adorable chips ever and they taste pretty good. As much as I wanted a potato chip ornament, I feel like if I tried to make a potato chip ornament, it would just look like little ovals floating there. So I figured I should make the flavor of these, which were the salty green pea. So I wanted to create a green pea that was hanging there and the little little peas were hanging out and, and hanging and dangling. And I just think it's so cute whenever I make ornaments with dangly bits that aren't just a solid ornament. So we've got the pea pod and several little peas hanging down from string and it's just so cute the way they hang there. Though honestly, after I put it together, I thought it looked like legs and feet and he's like, do, 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 do. And then I showed my husband and he was like, hey, that looks like legs and feet. And I was like, dang it. It's like that dog character, Mame Shiba. It's an edamame that looks like a dog. It's like if someone tried to create a character out of the peas, but it didn't turn out so right. So we've got this weird legged thing. It's still cute though. Next up, I love this little guy. We have the Shinchan Apple Chopo Bee. Apple flavor, which is a little different than our apple flavor, but it's not bad. So this is another one of those snacks where if I just created a snack, it would just look like some stars hanging there. And although it would have looked cute if I recreated the packaging on this one as well, their mascot is just so simple and cute and I couldn't resist turning it into an ornament because it was just, it was just so perfect to turn into an ornament. Simple, bold shapes and colors are the best for sewing from felt. So I got started on this little guy and I think he turned out really good. I don't know how I feel about having a mascot that I don't really have any feelings for on my Christmas tree, but I think I'll survive. 
The only struggle I had on this one was his eyes. I wasn't sure if I wanted to make him double-sided so that you could see his eyes on both sides, or if I wanted to make the back of the eyelids pink to match his skin. I don't know how the eyeballs on these cartoon characters work. I also wasn't sure if I wanted to make this guy full body, but I think keeping it to the head was a good choice. Simple and cute. Now this is an interesting combination. We have tomato and cherry gummies. All right. I was scared of that flavor combination, but it's really good. It's really sweet. So this ornament looks nothing like the snack, but I took inspiration from the fact that they are cherry and tomato. So I made some cherry tomato skewers. I know, very Christmassy. Who wouldn't want this ornament on their Christmas tree? It was just a really cute idea, I think, to break out my wire and create a skewer and then create these tiny little cherry tomatoes and make them look all charred with the thread and put them together like they're an actual food. I think one of my favorite ornaments to make are food ornaments for sure, so recreating this strange food for your My Christmas Tree was just really fun. It's bright, it's colorful, it's unexpected, it's cute, I mean, what do you need? It's not sweet like the candy, but cherries, tomato, cherry tomato, get it? It's, let's be honest, the colors are red and green. That's, that's very Christmassy if you ask me. Look, I think this is a really cute one, and uh, yeah, there you go. Eat your vegetables, kids. Our next ornament will be based off of these bourbon strawberry chocolate chips. Woo. I absolutely love this sweet and salty and crunchy combination. So once again, as much as I did want to make a potato chip and making a crinkled potato chip would probably look a lot better than a flat one. Had I bunched them up and sewed the ridges, ooh, I bet I actually could have really made that look like a potato chip. But honestly, I just didn't feel like making a chocolate covered potato chip because I just didn't, it just wouldn't read well because you don't think chocolate covered potato chips are a thing. So I decided to recreate the flavor of this chip. So I made a chocolate dipped strawberry. And as much as I did want to make it white chocolate to match the colors of the snack a little bit better. I just thought a strawberry dipped in milk chocolate is more recognizable than a white chocolate dipped strawberry. So that's what I ended up with. And I also couldn't resist having a drop of chocolate hanging down from the main bit of chocolate. So we do have a little dangly bit on the ornament, which as you know, is one of my favorite things to do. And yeah, that is our chocolate dipped strawberry ornament. I do like this one. Okay, next we have burnt caramel taiyaki. That's interesting. I was not expecting that flavor. It's almost bitter, but it's kind of sweet with an interesting texture. This is definitely one of my favorite ornaments from this batch. I didn't do the burnt caramel taiyaki, but I did a taiyaki ice cream cone. So if you've ever seen those Japanese snacks, it's a taiyaki shaped ice cream cone. So instead of having a bread filled with something, it's a bread filled with ice cream as a ice cream cone. How can you go wrong with that combination? It's kind of like a waffle sort of texture, but not like a hard waffle cone. It's like a soft fluffy cone. Oh man. It's pretty good. So once I had this idea into my head, I couldn't resist doing it. And I also wanted to make the flavors green tea and vanilla swirl. I just thought that would be more cute than doing a black ice cream. I do absolutely love black sesame ice cream, but let's be honest, black's not the most fun color to make into an ornament. My apologies to all of my goth Christmas fans out there. I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sure your pure black Christmas trees are beautiful in their own way, but I want green and white. Pick this one up with the last one. This is our DIY exciting fishing DIY kit. Oh gosh. This is definitely the most adorable DIY kit yet. And it tastes good too, which is definitely an important part of these candy kits. I think this was the ornament I was the most excited about making because I love little dangle things. I think that's just something we can all agree that we've learned today is that Casey loves her dangles. 
So obviously I just had to recreate this snack and have a fishing pole with three fish hanging off of it because it would be the most adorable thing. I just love little tiny sewn detailed things hanging all together. It's just so cute. The more the merrier. So because this was such a complicated ornament, I could only show you me making one fish. You get the gist of it. It's pretty much the same thing. I strung them all together and made a little fishing rod and had them hang off. And it's just the cutest little ornament in different parts with the pole, the fish hanging off, so many dangles. I love it. These guys are so cute. I think my one regret with this ornament is that I didn't balance the weight of the fish and the pole correctly, which is something I seem to struggle with with a lot of these. That said, I think this would make the perfect handmade gift for someone in your family who loves fishing. Next is Bubbly Cola Ramune Candy. So this one really does fizz a lot in your mouth. It's really interesting and really good actually. So this candy isn't a bubble gum, but when I looked at the character on the front of the package, I couldn't help but see a bunch of bubbles that you blow with bubble gum. I also didn't want to make a second drink ornament because we do have our drink later on. So because I couldn't stop thinking about bubble gum, I also thought about a bubble gum machine. And once I had that thought in my head, I absolutely could not get it out. And I thought it would be very colorful, very cute. And I also got to play around with plastic, which I don't think I've ever done with my ornaments. Creating a clear plastic element in these ornaments just gives it that really cool effect. I just use one of those plastic sleeves that you put paper in to use for school or whatever the heck and I just sewed right into it and it worked so much better than I expected. I expected a little bit of tearing or something but no this turned out perfect. I love this ornament. It's so colorful and this just makes me want to do other things like I don't know a fish tank bowl, space helmet. The possibilities are endless and I'm getting very excited. <laughs> Our next ornament will be based off of this bourbon uh, Sylvain chocolate cake. <laughs> Sounds fancy. These are the fanciest looking packaged cakes I've ever seen and they are very delicious too. So this ornament was definitely a learning experience. I don't think I've ever made anything like this for my ornaments. That's, I guess, so 3D. Usually my ornaments are kind of on the flat side. I have sewn plushies and 3D things in my life, but I think when it comes to the style of these felt ornaments, there's a certain way I like to do things. And I don't think I had quite figured out how I wanted to make a 3D felt ornament before. So basically I wanted to recreate this cake and it, the results aren't great. Like I said, this is, this was quite a learning experience. I think the results look like a little dog chewing toy. I definitely know what I would do different next time. And as much as I think this ornament needed a second go around, just didn't care enough to make this cake better, I guess. So yeah, what you see is what you get. And this cake is, yep, this cake is, that's the cake. <laughs> Next up is our drink. We have Fanta Mango Jelly Drink. The flavor of this Fanta is really nice, but I can't get past the jelly chunks. So I wanted to recreate this drink can sort of situation, but I'm not really a fan of Fanta. Aha. So I didn't really want to recreate the Fanta can because it's not really something I would care to see on my Christmas tree. So I thought I would do a sort of parody off of a carbonated water drink I drink. It's the brand Bubbly. They usually have little smiles on their drinks. The colors of the cheeks depend on the flavor of the drink. So I thought I would do my own spin on it, have a cute little face on it instead call it soda smiles and also i just wanted a excuse to use this really nice pink color i have a felt my favorite flavor is grapefruit so that's kind of one of the reasons why i chose the pink color but i really just wanted to use that pink felt so i tried to replicate a can it got a little wonky on the top because i wanted to recreate that lip I learned a few things from the cake, but I guess I kept learning because this can. Whew. What can I say? I am still learning when it comes to sewing. I'll get there one day. All right, it's our umaibo. We have a taco yaki. Oh boy. Honestly, I expected worse from a taco yaki umaibo, but it just kind of tastes like the okonomiyaki sauce. Not bad. 
I was pretty excited to make a takoyaki ornament. If you don't know what takoyaki is, it's a fried ball of dough with a piece of octopus inside of it. I usually just say fried octopus ball, but that kind of sounds weird, so. So yeah, this one was really easy and really fun. I basically sewed a ball, which is very similar to my felt cacti. So I just made that, turned it inside out, and then started putting the sauce on top, the mayonnaise on top, which was really fun, even though it kind of looks like icing. The pink little sliver things are pickled ginger, and at the very end, I sprinkle, I don't actually sprinkle, green pieces for the seaweed, which you, you, you sprinkle on. Overall, this looks like a takoyaki, and I think it's really cute. It's just, it is what it is, and it's adorable. Makes me want to make some donut holes or other round-shaped foods. Since Christmas trees usually have those balls, you could do a bunch of bald foods. Cute. Oh gosh, our next little snack is this melon bread cookie. It's a little melon bread cookie. Not much else to say. So because I thought making this regular cookie would be kind of boring, and I thought making a melon would also be kind of boring, I had a few options go through my head. Did I want to make a bunch of fruits, a melon included? No, I didn't. I don't know, it just wasn't cookie enough for me, and I wanted to make a cookie. So I made a cookie that had a little bit of more effort go into it. This is a jammed shortbread cookie. I thought it would just be really cute to have the layer of the pink inside of it, have a heart on it. It would be really cute. I even sewed the edges to make it look a little bit more like a cookie cutter shape. I wanted to do a more Japanese cookie. So later you see me do those square cookie ornament and I also do end up doing a melon bread cookie ornament. And yeah, I made three cookies and now I want to eat them. Last snack will be Kumamon White Sesame Cracker. I actually love sesame, so this cracker is pretty much the best ever. So once again, this is another one of those snacks where had I done the snack, it would have just looked like this brown circle thing with a bunch of little sewn details on it. So because we have an adorable mascot, I thought, heck, let's just make another mascot ornament. And what a cute one this is. Kumamon is really adorable. He's just this really silly looking black bear. He's got goofy eyes. He's got the reddest, roundest cheeks. And hey, look, I'm actually making a black ornament for all of you goth Christmas lovers out there. He's adorable. I really like this guy. And I actually really like the little detail on the back. He's got a little tail, if you didn't notice. I did want to do a little bit of research to make sure if he did have a tail or not, and he does, so I was very excited to give him a tail. As I was sewing this little guy up, I almost, almost forgot his eyebrows. So very quickly, before it was too late, I put his little white eyebrows on, and now he looks quite surprised. And that is that for our very last cute food-inspired ornament. And that is all 16 of our ornaments. I hope you guys enjoyed this Tokyo treat creation. I hope you'll forgive me for not doing drawings. I'm just very much in the sewing ornament mood because of Christmas. Maybe you guys can take some inspiration and make some homemade gifts, who knows? All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. And now a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons for all of their support. You guys are the best. If you want to be in the credits at the end of my videos, see secret sketches, coloring pages, early access, and more, check out my Patreon by clicking a link in the description. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Bye! Bye.